everybody eats when they come to my house. Try a tomato plate too. Here's catch a tori dory. Howdy everybody. It's Colorado Biker Prepper again, coming at you with another cooking video. Yeah, it's time to cook again. Today we're gonna make pasta dough, homemade pasta. Yeah, love it. So, uh, let's just dig right in and get started. For this, you're gonna need eggs, salt, oil, flour. We have two kinds here. We have regular bread flour and we have semolina flour, which is from Red Durham Wheat, and this is from making pasta specifically, but we're gonna do a mix. Uh, just to make it go a little quicker. So, first thing we're going to start with is with the flour. We are going to start with a measurement of flour. We are not going to do it in cups, we're going to do it by weight. So we are going to do 20 ounces of flour. That's about 550 grams. So, we're just going to dig right in here. We're going to get some flour. Whoop, well, that was good. Timed out on me. There we go. All right, here we go. Flour. So a uh, one pound, f one pound four ounces, twenty ounces, and we're gonna do about two thirds regular bread flour. And we're gonna do one third semolina flour. And this is just a texture thing. That's about right. This is the semolina flour. As you can see, it looks different. It's yellow, just because it hasn't been ground down into a uh, fine powder yet, like the white flour. But if you were to grind it down, there we go, one pound, 1.7. And this is the most accurate way. If you're doing pastry, this is what you also want to do when you're making fine pastries, is you want to weigh it. You don't want to do it by cups, by regular measurement, you want to do it by weight. Gives you the most accurate. There we go. One pound, four ounces. So we're perfect. And that's just a little cheapo postal scale I got at uh, Staples or something like that. Really cheap, but still works good. So anyway, so we have our mix, our flour mix. Now we have to do eggs. Now I'm not going to do a whole egg pasta. I'm going to do an egg white pasta, which means I have to separate out the egg whites from the egg yolks. Now to do this, you don't need any fancy ass egg white separator, egg separator. If you get good at cracking the egg yolks, you can actually just use the shell itself. See how that went? And I'll show you the other technique that I use here in just a second. All right, there we go. Put that in. Put the yolks in there, that'll work. All right, there's one. Ah, there we go. That's nicely done. And you can move it back and forth. But if you do that, be careful. It's easy to break the yolk. And if you get a little bit of yolk in it, no big deal. Like I said, it's not a whole egg pasta. It's a uh, egg white pasta. I'll make an egg. I'll make a whole egg pasta here sometime soon. And show you all that. There we go. All you gotta do is kind of wiggle it, and the shell actually kind of cuts the whites off. There we go. Bingo. Just like that. Real simple. Doesn't take a whole lot to do it. Don't need some fancy ass tool to do it. Just your regular way of doing it. There we go. And of course, the fresher the eggs, the better. There we go. And I've done this a lot, so I got a lot of practice at it when I was a chef in a fine dining restaurant. We made pasta every day in huge amounts. Used to have to do about 80 or 90 eggs like this every morning. So I got a lot of practice. And we're just dumping the egg whites right in there. There we go. Use one shell against the other, kind of cut it off there. And there we go. See? And I'm reserving the egg yolks. I'm, I'm keeping the egg yolks because I'm going to make pudding later. Yeah, homemade pudding. Don't have to buy that crappy, uh, crappy jello stuff. That stuff just does not taste as good as homemade pudding. 
homemade pudding rocks. There we go. All right. And these are just your regular grade A large eggs, not the medium size. These are the large. You need to get the large for this. If you have your own chickens, that's even better. I'm going to try and get chickens here this summer. We got to build them a chicken hut first, chicken house, chicken coop. There we go. Beautiful. Look at that. Excellent. There we go. Egg yolks. Egg whites. So, next. So we have egg yolks and egg whites. Egg yolks we're going to reserve. We can make creme brulee too if you got some heavy cream and all that. Done with the flour. Next we're going to do oil. We are going to do olive oil. Just for flavor we're going to do olive oil. And we're going to do about two to three tablespoons of good quality olive oil. You want that nice olive oil flavor in there. There we go. Two. That's good enough. Get all that in there. Good olive oil. Now we're going to do about a tablespoon of salt. Boom. Maybe a little bit more. There we go. Tablespoon and a teaspoon. Now that's pretty much it. That's pasta right there. Uh, let me grab a fork because I need to blend it. So, let's see here. Ah, there we go. Now we're going to mix. And this is how simple pasta can be. There we go. We're just going to mix it in there. We have one last thing we're going to add. You can see the dough looks a little bit. We're also going to use a half a cup of cold water. And the reason we're doing that is because the semolina flour needs to sit and absorb this. There we go. Excellent. Okay. Half a cup of water. And now we'll see it forms a dough. Look at that. Just right. If it's not quite right, you can always add just a touch more water or even just a little bit more olive oil. Not much. Look at that. There's our dough. Bingo. And you can tell you got it right. See it's not sticking to the bowl. See how it just all comes together in a blob just like the bread dough. There we go. That's a dough. Nice. And of course, like any dough, we got to knead it. So let's flour up our cutting board a little bit here. Take our dough, put it out, and we're going to knead it just like we do bread dough. And the more you knead it, the more elastic it becomes, just like bread dough. And I'm going to knead this one a bit. There we go. A little bit more flour. If it's sticking to your hands in the board, you just add a little bit more flour. And that will incorporate into the dough. You don't want to use too much. You want just enough to keep it from sticking. Because as you're kneading, it's going to absorb as much of that dough as possible. And use as much force as you can when kneading. That's the trick to good kneading. Is really getting in there. It's a workout. It's a great workout. It's a good thing to do with the kids too. Make the dough and let them knead it until they can't knead it no more. And then you take over. Woo! See? Getting energetic here. Alright. That's a good knead. Got a nice smooth even dough. It's not sticking to my hands. See? Look at that. That's a good dough. Okay. So, now since we're using the semolina flour, 
we are going to have to let this set. That semolina flour, sorry, that semolina flour has to have time to absorb that water and swell up and soften. So, there we go. Look at that nice dough. So, I'm gonna take some plastic wrap. Pen came off there. I'm gonna take that off. And we're gonna wrap it. There we go. I'm gonna wrap it up twice here just so that the moisture doesn't escape because we need all that moisture. There you go, there's the dough. And you gotta let it sit for six to eight hours in the fridge. So uh, the longer the better. And that's, that's enough dough, that'll last me a few days of pasta for lunch and dinner. So anyway, there it is, that's it. Hope you enjoy. Yeah, you get the cherry, Jerry. Now look, don't be so picky, Mickey. Cause everybody eats when they come to my house.